Ah, yes. Welcome to the last video, probably the fourth one. I might record more if I feel the need to. Of chapter one, uh, we are going to look at examples around vectors. All right. So this question is from page 30, May, June 17, paper 2, 3. Okay, so you have two forces, 5 and 12 Newton, acting from the same point on an object. Calculate the magnitude force of R acting in opposite direction. So if you want to find the resultant force in the acting in opposite direction, it's parallel. And it's parallel, then that's the best thing ever. You can just minus lah. Let's say 7. Right angle. Ah. So if right angle, you get 12, you get 5. So finally, Pythagoras law, 5, 12, 13. Okay? Or you can obviously calculate if you want. Alright, here you have an object X with two forces, 18 and 55 on a horizontal plane, meaning I put it on a table and then I push and pull in this direction. Okay, so you are said to use resolution of forces so you can use the resolving forces method or a scale diagram. So this question is very nice. They let you choose which method you want to do. All right, so here we are going to draw or going to resolve. Okay, so because this is technically on one node, like it's very hard for me to draw a scale diagram. I have no ruler on one node. All right, so what I'll do is I will uh, resolve the 18 Newton. First, I need to inherit an angle from 115. So you can say this is 90 degrees, so this is 25. And then if I do the Zorro, you know the Zorro, the alternate angle of parallel lines, this will also be 25. All right, so the component that has no angle will be sine, and the component that is beside the angle will be cos. You might be thinking, Miss, I cannot use this 65 meh. You know, the other angle is 65 ma. Sure, you can use cos, 18 cos 65 for the horizontal one and 18 sin 65 for the vertical one. Because, you know, uh, in maths, if A and B is 90, complementary angle, then cos A will be equal to sin B and sin A will be equal to cos B. If I teach you maths, I will prove this lah, but I think you know the proof one, okay? Think about it. So you can check and press your calculator. 18 sine 25 is equal to 18 cos 65. So right now I'm going to sum up the horizontal forces and sum up the vertical forces. So beginning I write everything first law. Then after a while I will write less and less one. Lah. Okay, so sum of horizontal force, sigma fx, will be 55 plus the other one which is in the same direction. So plus 18 sine 25. You can plus 18 sine 25, you can plus 18 cos 65 is fine. So I'll get my fx. Repeat again for some of the vertical forces. Okay, so the vertical force uh, will be 18 cos 25. Okay, so for this, then if I want to find the magnitude of the resultant, you notice I didn't press the value because I don't feel like it. So this will be square root of 55 plus 18 sine 25 square, the whole thing, plus 18 cos 25. So this question, huh, it will be better if you actually uh, consider the fact that you write the 4186 first. Lah. The reason why I say that is because uh, from my experience looking at the mark scheme, this is where your examiner will stop and say, hmm, the candidate is doing a good job, right on track. Okay, so up to you lah. So the answer is about 65. Ta-da! Proven. Alright, of course you can draw a scale diagram. I would highly suggest you do it in class. In fact, I think I will tell you to do it so that I can check. Alright, moving on. Determine the angle between the resultant force and 55 Newton. Okay, so you have Fx horizontal. You have Fy vertically downwards, so your resultant is roughly in this direction. No? And then this direction, because this is 90 degree, right? You are measuring it from the horizontal. 55 Newton is horizontal. And you want to find the angle between 55 Newton and Fx, which is 55 Newton and the horizontal. Okay? So to find tangent theta, I will take Fy over Fx. So 18 cos 25. And uh, with 18 cos 25... Divide by 15, 55, sorry, plus 18 sine 25. So you get tangent theta. I tend to always write this because if I want to come back and check at the end of the paper, 
to check whether I press calculator wrongly, it will be easy. Okay, so here I will get 14.6 degree. Okay, carry on. Third force, 80 Newton, is now applied to X opposite direction to the resultant force. This one, very nice one. Because opposite direction, that means it's parallel, I can straight away minus. Okay, or in other words, let's assume your X is here. Okay, let's say it's a little box here, which is X. And we are going to apply a force opposite to the resultant. But 80 Newton, uh, I don't want to draw longer lah. Uh, I don't want to like mess up the diagram too much so this will be 80 Newton and this is 65 so you can see they are di diametrically in the opposite direction so I minus law so from here they just want the magnitude I will omit the negative sign and I will get my a as 5.5555555 or 5.56 meter per second square of course in case they ask you what is the direction of the acceleration uh, it will be the same direction as 80 Newton because 80 Newton is the larger resultant force Okay, you can find the direction of the 80 Newton ma. alternate angle. So 80 Newton would be 14.6 degree above the horizontal axis or above the negative horizontal axis. Alright, so there will be a standard structure question. Don't worry, in class I will give you some tasks to do from all of these. Go try, go try. I'm going to do now an objective question because I need to talk to you about the various vector objective questions, starting with this one, okay? So this is in page 12, all right, page 12, May, June 16, paper 1, 2. So you can see you have two vectors, x and y, and then you are asked to find vector z. So it says x is equal to y minus z, or x equal to y minus z. So I rearrange law, I get z is equal to y minus x. Now what I'm doing here is something that you can never do during the exam. I mean, not as easily as I did. I trace out the vectors. So I trace out a vector y. I guess you can now. Uh, you use a ruler, you measure the length, and then you draw. It works. Then you trace out the vector x. Here. Okay. So you notice that for x, uh, I draw the opposite direction. Because to find z, I need to take y minus x, which is y plus negative x. That's why uh, I drew x in the opposite direction to its original form. And then I'll label this one as negative x. I'm not sure where my negative went, but don't worry, it'll come back. So the resultant would be here to here, where you start to where you end. This I will draw with a double arrow. That's your resultant. That will be y plus negative x, which is y minus x. La. So you check law which vector roughly in the same direction. Ta-da! Okay. And the final question I want to discuss is in page 7, ON 13, paper 1, 1. This one says there is a pendulum bob held stationary by this horizontal force, H. Three forces acting on the bob is shown. So if it's held stationary, it means that the bob is in equilibrium. So the net force is zero. And then you see all these cos are sign, are T, are H, are W, are confusion. Are. Please don't be. Okay. So the thing about zero resultant force is that all these forces should cancel out. And then the easiest way to do this is to draw a vector diagram. Of course, you can resolve. You can resolve. No problem. I will show you the resolution one later. But you can draw the vector diagram this way. Okay. So I'm again, once again, tracing out the vectors. And when I draw a vector diagram, if there's no resultant force, uh, this means that the vector diagram will close. So I will get a cyclic vector diagram like this. I generally find, especially for equilibrium, vector diagrams easier for you to find the relevant equation. But again, to cater for the variety, I will use the resolution of forces as well. So from here, you will see that uh, I'm trying to make the diagram bigger. Ta -da! Okay. So first, I need to inherit an angle. Okay, and I'll label first, this is T, this is H, this is W. So the angle 30 degree oh, is with the horizontal law, so this one will be 60. First thing, I check the A, B, C, D option. Is it all in 30? Correct. So I don't give myself headache by using 60 degree, la. I will use the 30 degree. So don't know what to do, you see a bunch of sign. Okay, lo. then we use sign. Lo. So by the way, again, I write here for you. If the resultant force is zero, there's a cyclic vector diagram, okay? So, sine 30 here would be H over T, okay? So, H would be T sine 30, and cos 30 would be W over T, 
So W is equal to T cos 30. You can see your answer already. But just for fun, I go and take 1 divided by 2. La. So T sine 30 over T cos 30 will be equal to H over W. This is tangent 30, which is H over W, which you can obviously write H is equal to W tangent 30. Or means why don't you just use 30? Can la, tangent 30, you can tell from the diagram. No problem. So from here, you can actually just choose whichever option is correct. You have three equations. By the way, that that also proves the identity of tangent using a unit triangle. Later la, you do trigo la. I'm sure your teacher will tell you. Okay, so I think we can choose the answer and that would be C. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the other method where I use resolution of factors. Alright, the second method here will be to select a force that is neither parallel nor perpendicular. So in this case, uh, the odd one out is obviously T. So we're going to have to resolve T and just let me choose a suitable pen. So normally I speed up the video one. Uh. This one is in real time, it's not sped up. So I'm doing it live in the flesh, which will take a bit longer. But I don't have time to edit anymore. Once to go home, it is late. So this one, I will split the T because the T is pointing up, so you have a vector pointing up and the T is pointing left, so you have a vector pointing left. Since we are going to inherit the angle 30 to fit the MCQ, this will be 30 degree. So when I resolve this one, this one is beside the angle. So this is T cos 30 and this one here will be T sine 30 because it's not beside the angle. So in equilibrium hall, up force must be equal to down force. So the up force is T cos 30 must be equal to W. Also at the same time, left must be equal to right. So T sine 30 must be equal to H. So you can check both variations and you see that A the same uh, T sine 30 is H, H is T sine 30, T cos 30 is W, W is T cos 30. So in conclusion, many roads lead to Rome. Okay, there's no one fixed method to do things. Alright, so that's it for this example video and that's also it for chapter 1. The only part about chapter 1 that is important that I've not talk spoke to you about is estimating stuff. Okay, so I'll talk about the estimating stuff later uh, when I see you in person because, come on guys, we need to think about how to estimate weird, weird values like, I don't know, um, you know, mass of an orange. Okay, so we'll do this later in class. Um, yeah, or you try some past years. Lah. So everything else will happen in face-to-face -face class. Now we'll see you there. Bye-bye. Or in chapter 2, depending on when you're watching this. Bye.